So this is problem number two. It's a calculator question from the 2016 AP Calc BC exam, and it deals with parametric curves. And the problem statement here says that at time t, the position of a particle moving in the plane is given by the parametric function x of t, y of t. So x and y both depend on t. They tell us that dx dt, so the rate of change of the x coordinate with respect to time, is given by this. The graph of y is going to be built with three line segments and it's shown over here. At time zero the particle is at position five comma one. So the thing you have to kind of recognize right away here is that this graph is quite different than the derivative that you're given here. Uh, this graph represents the y coordinate of the object at any time t. So if you look at this graph at the t value of one, kind of covered it up with my ordered pair there, but at the t value of, of one the y coordinate of the object is negative one. We don't have the capability of, of putting one into this and getting the corresponding x coordinate. So we've got to recognize that this is the x component of velocity, and this graph is going to indicate the y component of position. And if you check out part A, it does ask for the position of the particle at time three. And so if you do this component wise to find the x co component of position at time three, you're going to have to take the x component at time zero, which is five, and you're going to have to add on how much the x component of position changes from zero to three by integrating the rate of change of the x component of position or integrating the x component of velocity. Uh, that's an integral that you can do on the calculator, and you should end up with 14.377 for the x coordinate of the object at time three. What about the y coordinate? Well, just like we mentioned a couple minutes ago, this graph indicates the y coordinate. So at t is equal to three, what's this y value? Well, if you figure out that this line has a slope of positive one half, uh, you're gonna realize if you go up one half and over one, uh, that's gonna keep you on that line. And that makes that y value negative one half at three. So the position of the object at three is right here. Part B asks us to find the slope of the line tangent to the path of the particle at time three. So the way that you're going to find slope when you're dealing with a plane curve or a curve defined by a set of parametric equations is you're going to find the rate of change of y with respect to x by taking the rate of change of y with respect to t and dividing by the rate of change of x with respect to t. We just need to evaluate these at three to find the slope of the tangent line at three. And so if you think about dy dt at 3, we, we actually mentioned this in part A. It's going to be the slope of this graph, right? It's a derivative. This is a graph of y. So we need to know the slope to find the value of that derivative at 3. And that's going to be positive 1 half, right? Just the slope of this line segment right here. We need to divide by that the rate of change of x with respect to t evaluated at 3. That's going to just be a simple evaluation of this. It's going to get a little bit ugly because it will be an irrational value, but if you do this computation on the calculator, you end up with 0 0.050 for the slope of the line tangent to the path of the particle at 3. Part C asks us to find the speed of the particle at time 3. So speed is simply the magnitude of the resultant velocity vector and if you find the x component of velocity at three that's simple it's, it's basically what we did in that denominator of the last piece uh, evaluate for the x component of velocity at three and you get 9.956 evaluate for the y component of velocity at three and that's just going to be the the slope of this line segment again and that ended up being one half so if you have a vector where the x component is 9.95 and the y component is positive one half, uh, you need to know the magnitude of this resultant vector. So you do a quick Pythagorean theorem calculation. Now when I type this into the calculator to arrive at this result, I definitely used all of the accuracy that you see I jotted down back here uh, for that 9.95 value. Uh, and that just ensures that I have the desired degree of accuracy that I need to satisfy the College Board's requirement, that third digit beyond the decimal. So 9.969 is going to be the speed of the particle at time three. The last part of this is a little bit tricky because of how you have to handle it, but it is something that you should be pretty familiar with doing. Uh, find the total distance traveled by the particle from 0 to 2. Well, to find total distance, we'll just integrate our speed function from 0 to 2, or uh, find the length of the curve 
from zero to two. And that formula is, is always going to amount to this calculation. Now the weird thing about this is that if you think about it, on the interval zero to two, dy dt does not have a fixed value. On the interval from zero to one, dy dt takes on the slope of this line. And then on the interval from one to two, dy dt takes on a value of zero since the slope of this line right here is zero. And so you're going to have to break this up into two separate integrals and add the results to get your overall speed on the entire interval from zero to two. So I broke it up from zero to one, did my speed from zero to one, added that with my speed from one the rest of the way to two. And these are definitely computations that I did on the calculator, and I ended up with a speed of 4.350 at the t, or on the interval, excuse me, this is not speed anymore. Uh, I ended up with a total distance traveled, or a total length of the curve of 4.350 as the curve ranged from 0 to 2.